Sheen Shot. Yeah, boy. Most people are pretty aware that the Star Child Claymore is an S tier weapon in Outward. It has high attack speed, incredible impact, and looks gorgeous. Because this weapon is so amazing, it is a bit harder to get. You need to defeat the dreaded Royal Manticore, and that monstrosity is one of the most challenging enemies in the game. This beast has a lot of impact resistance, 2200 health, and regenerates 4 health per second. The highly aggressive nature of this enemy means you never get a break, and it's almost impossible to run away if things go wrong. And many things can go wrong. You can be afflicted with extreme poison, bit by massive jaws of death, and whacked in the face with a massive tail swing. So how on earth are you supposed to defeat this animal? Especially in the early game when you really want such an amazing sword. Your first thought might be tripwire traps. A lot of them. So I tried this to kind of see how many it would take. It's in no way worth it, for multiple reasons. For starters, it's going to take upwards of 40 tripwire traps, at the least. But with the way enemy spawns are in Definitive Edition, you will often have bandits or deer run into these instead, wasting your time. Now, this won't really happen as much if the Royal Manticore is prowling around in a decent space, but anywhere in the middle of this canyon and things tend to spawn in every time you turn around. I also recommend putting a bunch of traps in a small area rather than a giant line. Not really that efficient if you do it like this. So, don't use tripwire traps. It's not really worth the time or iron. Instead, you want to use fire damage because the Royal Manticore is negative 40% weak to fire. Not only does this negate the high health regen, but it also deals high damage over time if you apply burning. You can do this with a fire varnish, but again, unless you understand this monster's movesets well, and even then, it's hard not to get hit. Instead, opt for the pressure plate tactic. This requires you to first talk to the rogue engineer in the slums of Levant for pressure plate training. It's a passive skill which allows you to place pressure plates. Then go ahead and craft yourself some fire charges. You'll need to throw a thick oil, iron scrap, and salt into an alchemy kit. Out will come three incendiary charges which deal 85 fire damage and inflict burning. This is the optimal tactic for taking on the Royal Mance Corps, especially early on. Do the horror weapon farm and then buy as many pressure plate traps as you can get your hands on. 15 to 20 should do the trick. Then get you a good shield. This will prevent you from being knocked down constantly and also lets you block some of those annoying projectiles he throws at you. Unfortunately, the projectiles can get through the shields depending on the angle. Going with a tower shield or better yet, SAR shield almost completely prevents this since they're larger shields. But be aware it's still possible to get hit by that attack. Now, the Royal Manticore will wander around the Emmerker Forest near the bottom left of your map. This is to the left of the Cabal Wind Temple in a valley of sorts. If you get lucky, the Manticore will be in the very back, kind of in its own nest. This is usually the case the first time you enter Emmerker, oddly enough. Line up your pressure plates and just bring the beast towards them. The immense fire damage is too much for our mortal enemy to defend against. And if you don't really have a lot of those pressure plates, you can always set them far apart and only bring the Manticore near one when its burning runs out. Fire is the way to go in this fight, and I highly recommend you take a ton of potions if you want to defeat this beast without traps. Upon killing this beautiful yet wild animal, it will drop the Star Child Claymore. It's the most samurai-like sword in Outward, and is probably similar to the swords the giants carry around and never use. Seriously, look at a giant sometime. They have samurai swords, but instead use a massive axe. Likely, these swords are more ceremonial than anything else. Giants are known for their respective culture and traditional ways. The Star Child Claymore is a porcelain weapon likely created by the giants. There are several porcelain weapons in Outward, and each of them are some of the strongest weapons you can grab. All dealing high impact and loads of elemental damage. Each also has an interesting description that relates to giant culture. Star Child reads, The Dawn Weaver's knowledge showed us the way. He came from the stars, and to the stars we shall follow. The Dawn Weaver is what giants would consider a god coming down from the stars. They highly respect this being and likely respect the sword as well. The next time you find yourself using the Star Child Claymore, remember that it holds more meaning than you might think.
Also, something interesting is I actually killed a giant right outside the Royal Manticore's nest recently, which is sort of fitting. Hopefully this was helpful for those looking to take this monster down faster. The Royal Manticore isn't really all that royal once fire is involved. And never forget that an obsidian bow and torment make for easy burning as well. Good luck killing this massive beast, and I'll catch you next time.